This controversy all started after the baseball team, the LA Dodgers, invited a local LGBT group to their Pride Night. The group call themselves the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence and say that they are devoted to charity work. It's a 21st century order of queer nuns who want to help their communities, who want to take care of other people. However, there was a strong reaction to the invitation with prominent Catholics speaking out, accusing the group of being anti-Catholic, mocking nuns, biblical symbols, and some of the most sacred aspects of Christianity, like Jesus' crucifixion. One of those speaking out was Bishop Robert Barron. For Catholics, it's hard to imagine anything more offensive. In response, the LA Dodgers rescinded the invitation. Then, they received a backlash from various LGBT groups. And feeling the pressure, the LA Dodgers re-invited them and issued an apology. The Dodgers are now re-inviting drag group Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence to its Pride Night next month. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence getting more support than they ever imagined. They also announced that they would be giving the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence a special community hero award. The LA Dodgers are honoring a group called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. I'm just not going to get into the middle of... With the announcement of their re-invitation and upcoming award, there was once again a backlash from those who call them a hate group. Re-invited a drag group known for mocking Christians and nuns. But this time, the LA Dodgers were not moving. One baseball player who spoke out strongly was Trevor Williams of the Washington Nationals. He took to Twitter to condemn the LA Dodgers' decision to honor the group that he says is deeply offensive to his faith. His statement quickly went viral. And Trevor Williams joined that as well, pitcher for the Nats. Trevor Williams. I hope that Trevor Williams is ready for the backlash. I mean, that, that is a courageous statement by Trevor Williams. And now for the first time, he sits down for an on-camera interview to explain how he believes they are making a mockery of his faith and why they should not be awarded. Trevor Williams, great to meet you and thank you so much for doing this interview. Good meeting you as well, thank you. Your tweet that went viral all over the world, almost 20 million views, uh, it's a long statement but I'll just read a short piece from it now. You said, as a devout Catholic, I am deeply troubled by the Dodgers' decision to re-invite and honour the group, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, at their Pride Night. To invite and honour a group that makes a blatant and deeply offensive mockery of my religion and the religion of over 4 million people in the Los Angeles County alone undermines the values of respect and inclusivity that should be upheld by any organisation. And like I said, that's been read 19 million times. Trevor, why did you feel so strongly that you wanted to make that statement? Uh, it had to be said. Um, we cannot stand idly by while our Lord gets mocked. And uh, before I hit send, you know, you, you try and do as much research as you can, right? You see the horrific videos that were posted of them. You read about what they were trying to do. Um, these things that are deeply offensive to us. And then you see that, well, they're doing these things. They're raising money for this, that, and the other. They've been doing it for over 30 years. But it, it was the point when the Dodgers re-invited them after knowing very well what they've been doing for the last 30 years. Um, to give them a Community Hero Award. Correct. And, that, and at that point, you know, <laughs> at that point, I looked at the Dodgers Code of Conduct. I'm like, look, or the Dodgers Fan Code of Conduct. And it said, you cannot wear anything or say anything that goes anybody's against anybody's age, gender, creed, religion. And at that point, it was like, this is a blatant, this is going against their code of conduct. Um, it's a blatant um, anti-Catholic message that they're sending, regardless of how much, you know, quote unquote, good they've been doing in their community. But when I saw how deeply offensive it was, doing awful things to the cross, doing awful things about stations of the cross, like it's just, it became a point where this, these negatives are, are not, they shouldn't be honored and they shouldn't mock a certain room, a certain group. Because you did say in that statement as well that you believe all groups should be welcomed and respected when it comes to Major League mm -hmm. Baseball. So this group specifically, the group who call themselves the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, mm -hmm. what is it, if we get to the core of it, that you believe is mocking your Catholic faith? 
Yeah, I think if anyone with two eyes and a brain can see that they're, you know, they're they're mocking uh, the the religious habits of the of nuns. They're mocking um, what we hold most deeply and what are our core convictions. They're just they're they're blatantly mocking it. When, when you when you look at it from the outside and a totally objective view, this is it's blatant mockery. Now the group who called themselves the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, they released a statement. It was before your statement, but in response to the, mm. the backlash from mm -hmm. Catholics, they said that they're not anti Catholic, but they're an organization based on love, acceptance and celebrating human diversity. And in terms of dressing up in drag and mocking Catholic nuns, the group said that its members use humor and irreverent wit to expose the forces of bigotry, complacency and guilt that chain the human spirit. Mm -hmm. What do you think of their response? Um, you know, if, if they are preaching these things on tolerance and uh, love, um, you could look at this from an objective point of view and say so this isn't um, this isn't out of love. When when you go out of your way to desecrating a crucifix or you know dancing on what appears to be Jesus on a cross, that isn't representing out of love. the crucifixion, the most important right. uh, moment for for Christians all right. over the world. And what we hold to most dear, we look at the cross and the crucifixion, and we see that Jesus dying for us and His blood soaking us and washing us of our sin. And for someone to do that because they say it's art and it's out of love and tolerance, it doesn't make sense. Trevor, do you see hypocrisy here when you look at how Catholics are treated in the United States? Because if you just imagine a group making fun of a, a Jewish rabbi mm. and the Torah or a Muslim and the Quran, what mm -hmm. the reaction would be to that? I would, I would hope that they wouldn't be allowed at that stadium. I would hope, but there seems to be this it's okay to make fun of Christianity in general and Catholicism in, in particular. 20 million views, hmm. almost 19 million views. Are you surprised by how many people have read and engaged with the statement that you put up on Twitter? You know, my intention with that statement was to get as many eyeballs on it as possible and for people um, to see the hypocrisy that I was trying to point out um, of what the Dodgers were doing and um, you know, I, I hit send tweet and I threw my phone and I was like, I logged out and I'm like, we'll just, we'll see how it see does. We'll see how it does. And, um, but I've had a lot of people come out and, and reach out to me, um, former teammates, um, current teammates, um, even like stadium workers. When we were at Dodger Stadium, when this statement was made, just walking through the tunnels, getting to the clubhouse, I've had, I had stadium workers come up to me and thank me. So a lot of people have reached out um, thanking me for my courage and thanking me for making the statement because a lot of people feel like they either don't have a big enough voice um, to say something or they are afraid of the backlash. When you speak about the backlash and having courage to do this, most of the people, if you read through the comments, mm. are supporting you. But then there are those who are saying things like homophobic and transphobic mm. and you just have a problem with that, the, the LGBT group. First of all, what do you say to so those accusations? Uh, you know, I didn't say anything anti-pride in my statement. I tried to be as charitable as possible. I just, I truly just wanted to point out the hypocrisy that the Dodgers Code of Conduct says, you cannot make fun of a group, yet we're honoring this group at the expense of making fun of this group. Yeah, so, so your that, issues with the mockery they're making of your faith. Correct. And the mockery of it, and then the Dodgers not upholding, not following their own rules. So that was truly my statement. If you read into it any other way, that's on you, <laughs> but that... were, were you afraid of the possible ramifications of being cancelled? We see people lose mm -hmm. everything over mm -hmm. a tweet or an opinion that they put online. You were putting your neck out there mm -hmm. when a lot of other players are not. Mm -hmm. Were you worried? I wasn't necessarily worried because this is this is something that I believe is truth, right? And it's something that um, this is this is Trevor the Catholic man tweeting this. Um, I what I what I did I believed was true and I had to stick up for our truth and at the end of the day baseball is important and it's given me a lot of tremendous opportunities um, it's a privilege to play this game and I'm thankful for everyone who's given me an opportunity um, but when I die hopefully in a state of grace and St. Peter greets me at the gates he's not going to ask what your win-loss record was in 2023 he's just going to how did you you know how did you build the kingdom of heaven and um, I just being in a position like this, um, being a Major League Baseball player, 
and my religion being mocked in the realm of Major League Baseball, it only made sense to stick up for my truth. You said that people were coming up to you on the street or in the, mm. the baseball stadium saying well done. And mm. what about your teammates, your peers? Mm -hmm. I've had um, really good conversations with teammates um, about this. Um, again, people thanking me, teammates thanking me for what um, I could be done, what, what I did. It's just, it's something that most people and most players are supportive of. What do you, would you say to people, Trevor, who are Catholics, they might not call themselves devout Catholics, but mm -hmm. they're fans of the LA Dodgers. They love going to the games. They just want to watch the games. They don't want to get involved in all that. They see it as an argument happening for other people somewhere yeah. else, but they're still Catholics. Maybe they go to mass mm -hmm. every Sunday. They find themselves in a bind. Sure. They want to keep supporting their team. They like their faith. They like their church. What do they do? I think, um, it's, it's, it's a valid question, and it's something that um, a lot of families and individuals are going to have over the next, hopefully, weeks, months. Um, but that's, that's the point of a statement like this, is to, is to start the conversation. It starts with not attending that, that game. Um, it starts with potentially reconsidering where you put your dollars. Um, I think there is a longing for truth. I think everyone has that desire to find truth, and I've noticed it... Um, in locker rooms in my entire life, in clubhouses my entire life, being with, with uh, teammates of the same age or similar ages, there is a desire for truth. And that, that desire comes from within, from someone who loves you immensely. And you are loved more than you can imagine or more than you know. And that inkling of truth that you want, that you wanna go seek and find um, is out there. And it's within Christ and his church. Hey Trevor, great meeting you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much.